Greetings Petrolheads, welcome back to Automation the Car Company Tycoon Game. Today I'm gonna show you a 1963 car of Athena. It is called the SXL1, a saloon of very large size in its first generation. And uh, yeah, this is how it looks. I think this has the looks of a presidential limousine um, with the big mouth like that that sort of like a snobby nose or something it's got uh, lots of chrome lots and lots of chrome and uh, dual headlights as was usual back then it is huge obviously and this is of course aimed towards the american market this is meant to compete with cadillacs because let's face it while there were other big american cars uh, on the market back then none of them were really um, as prestigious as iconic as the Cadillac and uh, I actually am pretty happy with how this rear end looks I'm I'm thinking it it, it, it looks at, at at least as futuristic for the time back then as the Cadillac some um, sort of bullet uh, bullet head uh, head and taillights looked and uh, yeah again I, I did a different thing here with the with the Athena batching I surrounded the I surrounded them with chrome like on the outside rather than making the chrome run through the ace of of the Athena name I think it looks pretty good and uh, yeah, again, let's let's talk about the technical stuff here. This, unlike the uh, unlike the CS1, this is a traditional ladder chassis, which is still a steel uh, body and pan uh, steel material for the ladder chassis and also steel panels. Longitudinal engine placement, double wishbones front, leaf and springs rear, just like most cars back then. Also, look at how huge this engine bay is. You could easily fit another one of these 6.8 liter V8s in front of the first one. I mean, you probably wouldn't want that in this car. That, that would just make for an absolute assault of, of power and torque onto the rear wheels, but uh, you could. I think we've already talked about the looks, and uh, this is a four-door car. I was thinking about... Maybe making this a two-door, but I think it just looks better as a two-door. And, well, I might also make a, a four-door convertible uh, out of this a little bit later, once we finished uh, talking about all this. And uh, it is... Also, I started giving all my engines from now on names. This is going to be the Colossus V8. Oh, also the, the V12 that you saw in the CS1 is called the Hercules V12, because... Hercules had 12 tasks to finish so that it so that it would be granted entry to the to the Mount Olympus where all the gods are in, in Greek mythology anyway and uh, Colossus obviously because this uh, engine is pretty big I did look up what kind of engines the Cadillacs at the time were powered by and the current generation in 1963 was the one that started in 1961 and uh, ended in 64 and that came with two options a 6.4 and a 7 liter engine and therefore you know 6.8 is somewhere in between there it is aluminium i did also like that is one one choice that is probably going to be sort of controversial and uh in the end i i ended up going for it anyway because it makes for a better weight distribution for one and then also therefore it makes for a lot more acceleration and uh, just a lighter a more dynamic car uh, however however dynamic this is gonna be in the end <laughs> but again direct acting OHC because I did think on on the v12 that this that this is probably the, the, the system we should go for in this era because it is different enough from a posture rod but still 
maintains a good reliability and uh, good like costs as far as engines go however of course we got the post uh, the most expensive i was i was kind of I was kind of thinking about the best and the most expensive at the same time and then uh, I I misspoke it's okay though we got some quality in in the bottom end plus six and then plus five quality into the head section as well really really trying to boost this thing up a little bit not only in reliability also in terms of power because those Cadillacs they were no slouch man and we get a four, uh, we get two four parallel carburetors, and with a performance intake, because that's just how pretty much every engine back then looked. If it if it made more than you know 150 horsepower, <laughs> and uh, 5,000 RPM rev limit, we are make we are having slight issues in terms of reliability, which will go away if we go down to 4,700. But, of course, we get a lot more performance out of it this way. We get the plus 5 quality in here as well. In the fuel system, because that's that's a really nice buff in reliability. Let's, let's see that. And if we go to plus 0, it'll go down to 29.8. Oh, actually, I'm running this on 98 fuel and I'm not using all the, comp all the fuel octane that I have at my disposal. I'm an idiot. Let's do it now. 80. Eighty-four. Yeah, now we're at three hundred and fifty-two horsepower. Three hundred and fifty. Are we gonna do this? No, I don't think so. 352 horsepower rather than 340 that's gonna make for a lot of acceleration even in a, in a car as big as this um, we have for the first time an automatic gearbox it's a free speed open diff and tires I mean I wasn't so sure like how much how much tire can I put in this thing to make it still be realistic? Because back then, if a car had like two 25 millimeter tires, that was considered like enormous. Um, unless it was, uh, unless we're talking like drag racing cars or something. But we're not here. And uh, 205s, I think, was pretty much as far as I wanted to go in the rear tire. And then 185s up front to balance this graph a little bit better the solid discs front and rear we do have quite a bit of brake fade then again we would we would have because I mean I could go for even larger brakes but uh, at some point it's just not gonna be believable anymore because 300 millimeter disc brakes in 1963 was already very very um was already going to be very very high tech uh we get just enough cooling airflow we get five seats i chose five seats rather than you know four or six so that we can have two seats up front and three on the rear just like it's pretty much standard these days handmade interior as always phonograph power steering advanced safety and then progressive springs, twin tube dampers, and passive sway bars. I'm probably gonna balance out the spring stiffness a little bit more to make for better drivability. Twenty-eight point nine. Twenty-eight point nine drivability in a six point eight liter rear drive, uh, nineteen sixty three car. That is a pretty impressive number, I think. Um. 
Yeah, so as far as quarter mile times go, what do we got? That's a 15.8. I think that's at the very least on par with those Cadillacs from this area, um, from this era, if not faster. Um, also, as you may have been able to tell, and I didn't mention this in this or the previous episode, they get, the game's got an update and there's a new look for all of this, and there's new sounds on the test track for like wheel spin and for, uh, you know, spitting flames and whatnot. And I did assign like a team of employees here as well. This is gonna be in full production. Some uh, some better reliability. No funding here because the expen because uh, the car is already expensive enough. Um, engine is gonna be very reliable here. Small factory for the car. Small factory for the engine, because maybe we want to put this engine into another car. So now this costs 29,778 dollars. Which again is pretty much like 3,800... Or how much is that in 1963? Yeah, three thousand nine hundred or so dollars, and that is quite a bit less than those Cadillacs, isn't it? And I think it is now also time. Yeah, I, I think I like the idea of uh, of making a convertible out of this, because you know the Cadillacs were also like. Pretty popular and very iconic in their convertible versions. So let's make one of these as well. It's gonna be heavier. Oh yeah, a lot heavier. Wow. Well. Rear weight bias actually. We need to for rear springs. Four point two, and yeah, it is still pretty fast though, as far as top speed goes. This weighs two thousand kilograms, man. That's a lot. Um, other than that, I don't think we need to change very much, but we gotta do all of this again. Oh no, we don't. Uh, let's name this first. SLX one six eight. Uh, uh, open top. Uh huh. Let's just go with the same settings, and I also don't think we're gonna make a uh, a uh, limited production run out of this. It should just be fine, it should just be a normal production, I guess. Uh, Yeah, I guess four open tops and then 11 four door versions per day should be should be doable.
And then this is actually going to be more expensive, of course. But it still does really well here. Convertible luxury is... Like, it's very competitive here at 121.7. Not so affordable, though. Because, again, for 1963, this is a very expensive car. But then you're also getting a lot of car for your money. So, that is the SXL1. Leave me your your feedback on this car in the comments. Do you think people would buy it over a Cadillac? Why or why not? And, uh, yeah, thank I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you uh, enjoyed this car. Um, leave a like or a comment if you did. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.